Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Greetings. Amen. From uh, Africa. Uh, we're back and our spirits there. You wonder why we're wearing this. Amen. Because we we uh, we wore something like this before. And we said, hey, let's just have anybody want to wear it. We all can wear it together. But my, my wife uh, had this made in a tailor down there. It was uh, our, our money, is the last thing I'm saying, is uh, 125 times there. So if you got $1, it's $12.50. Okay, and so uh, $40 equals $5,000 over there. And so we, we basically got this, these outfits together for 40 American dollars. And it's just, it's just to have something made and designed for 40 dollars, two things, you know what I'm saying? And so we just give God all the praise and glory and we can go back and get some other clothes made, amen. Uh, there were so many prophetic things that happened in, this, in, 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 in Africa. Uh, that I just, uh, that's round two. I want to talk about the prophetic things, but not today, because I want to get into the word today, but I got so many prophetic things happened while we were there uh, that God had already shown me six years ago. It transpired when we was there. So I'm just telling you, uh, a vision is for an appointed time. Everything that God says is for an appointed time. Lord, I decrease, you increase. I thank you for those who are here today to hear your word. I thank you today that you have given me your word uh, for this house. We thank you for all that has done. It was done for your glory. It was done for your praise. It was done for your honor. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Uh, I want to get started with a story. And the, uh, the story is, uh, our topic is trusting, trust, right? Trust, trust. How many trust the Lord? Right, raise your hand if you trust the Lord. Uh, how many have some issues with trusting the Lord? Tell the truth. It's not always easy. It sounds right, it sounds good, but do are we really trusting Him, right? Amen. And so I'm going to tell a story. There was a guy uh, that uh, had traveled uh, for a while to go out and look over a mountain top. Uh, like uh, in Tennessee, they got a mountain in Tennessee called Lookout Mountain. Anybody heard of that before? It's, it, it's near Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm not saying this is the mountain he went to, but there was, and when you go to the top of the Chattanooga Mountain, it's a beautiful view of the valley below. And this guy wanted to go to this mountain top and to see uh, over this over this landscape and when he got there he traveled so far they, they had it closed off because they said the uh, the ground is unstable and so he saw the barricade but he looked around and how many of you does some illegal stuff like that you know he's supposed to be doing something he's still doing how many of you did that before all right all of y'all raise your hands up y'all going to jail, <laughs> going to jail. <laughs> Well, he decided to go beyond the barrier. He went beyond the barrier and he, he got a chance to see the view that, was, that it was. And as he was standing there uh, looking and, and admiring the view, uh, the rocks got loose and he fell. And when he fell, he grabbed onto a tree. Now he's out there on a limb on the tree. Amen. And he's, he don't know what to do. There's nobody there because nobody's allowed over there. But he broke the barrier and he's there. And so what happened, I'm going to get back up there just one second, amen. Can y'all see me amen? So what happened is, he said, I don't know if there's a God, but God, if you're up there, help me, God, help me. He's hanging on to the tree, and all of a sudden there's a voice came down from heaven. It says, my son, let go. And the man, he looked up, the man looked down, then he looked up again and says, hey, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. All right, all right. <laughs> he was saying, God, you ain't, you ain't telling me what I want to hear. Yeah. You know, is there, <laughs> is there anybody else up there? Because he, amen, it took trust or faith, right? To believe and let go. God, God is telling us, saints of God, brothers and sisters, any inhibitions that you have, anything that you're, you're holding back, God wants 
wants us to trust him and let those things go that we are holding on to. Does that make sense? They made a song uh, years ago, Let It Go, right? Do y'all know that song? Okay, my, they wore it out. That's why y'all don't want to talk about it again. Yeah. Let it go. <laughs> so, um, see, what happened is, you know, how can I trust God when many people that we trust let us down? Yeah. How can I really trust God? How many ever had a, a, a mother, a brother, sister, cousin, uh, a relative uh, let you down? Raise your hand if you ever been let down. Come on. Okay? And sometimes when you're let down, it's hard to build that thing called trust. I mean, you want to trust, but trust is earned. It's not just, uh, you know, I go and, uh, you know, I wreck your car, and then I trust you with my new car. I'm going to teach you, need to go to driving school. Come on, somebody. And then I got to pray about it, and then you drive my next car. Come on. Does that make sense? I'm the only one like that. Okay, pray for me. Amen. Trust is not something that is necessarily given, but trust is earned. Amen? And so I want to tell you that God has the track record. He's faithful. He watches over his word to perform it. Everything he said he will do, he will do. He will execute everything that he said. Look at his track record. His track record shows 100%. Somebody say hallelujah. See, it's saying I am willing to wait. I just cut somebody out because you don't like to wait. Trusting, my wife is laughing, I heard her. <laughs> when you trust God, you got to be willing to wait to see the manifestation of what he said. Because God watches over his word to perform it. And if he said he will do it, can you count on that? If he said he will perform it, will he do it? So you got to understand, trusting is saying, Lord, I am willing to wait. And waiting is saying, I am willing to trust. When you wait on God, you're showing to him that, God, I'm willing to trust you. Okay? That's why some things don't come to you instantaneously. How many pray for some things and it hasn't manifested yet? But how many are waiting and trusting on God? Amen. To, to, that he will perform what he said. The Bible says the promises of God are yes and amen. If he said it, sister, brother, he will do it. Somebody say hallelujah. I'll tell you uh, another story. And I'm not telling you that it's easy to trust God. Because it's man. <laughs> you can just imagine Abraham. Come on. Lord, you can be father of many nations. You're 75 years old. You ain't got no kid yet. Come on now. You ain't got no siblings. Amen. And then here comes another ideal. He has Ishmael. But he had to wait another 24, 25 years for the promised one. So you, how many years you've been waiting? Come on. You ain't, I don't think you've been waiting 25 years. Come on. And if God is able to perform what he says to Abraham, can he perform it for you? Okay. But there's a process of what? Waiting. Your waiting tells God, Lord, I'm willing to wait because I'm willing to trust you. Amen. How many willing to wait now? Are you really willing to wait? Because that's how you speak to God. Lord, you said it. I believe it. You're going to perform it. And Lord, I'm going to wait until it manifests. Somebody say hallelujah. The story of, uh, I want to tell one more story, and that is the story about uh, the movie called The Karate Kid. How many remember The Karate Kid? Mr. Mi Miyaki? And what was the boy's name? Danielson. Danielson. Yeah, I know I'm about to say Danielson. <laughs> the boy, the boy, I know it was a son. Danielson. And so Danielson wanted to know how to do karate. And Mr. Miyaki, he says, hmm, yeah, I'll teach you. And then he says, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? He says, go and wax my car. Well, go wax the car, this ain't karate. And he says, this is how you put the wax, you put the wax on, and you take the wax off. You put the wax on, and so he went and he waxed the car. Then the next day, a uh, few days later, what do you want me to do? Oh, you're supposed to be teaching the karate. No, go wax the car. 
Wax on, wax off, right? And so Daniel said, ABS said, look, I'm Tommy frustrated. He ain't teaching me no, <laughs> he ain't teaching me no karate. What's wrong with him? But you ain't teaching me. But what happened is that wax on, and that wax off was, was uh, 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 defensive moves. Come on. When they, it was hard. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. When he kicking and hitting, he going <laughs> He was being trained and didn't even know that he had been trained. See, God is like that. You sit there wondering, oh, where's this at? Why it ain't happening? God has said, I've been training you. And, you know, even with children, growing up children, I think everyone as a parent, you, you've got the spirit of a pastor on you. Come on. You've got to have that anointing of a pastor to care for those child because God is putting you in training for reigning. He's putting you in schooling for ruling. God never even a moment. God is doing something even when you twiddle your fingers, you think God is not hearing you or, or you are invisible, whatever it is. God is working something out in your character 24-7 and he knows how to do it precisely. Somebody say hallelujah. Can I get a witness on that? See, in the karate story, God, uh, Mr. Miyake, amen, was training him and he didn't know it, but I'm telling you this. God is worth trusting. Even when you don't see it, even when you don't feel it, you got to know that God has your best interest in mind. How many know that you got your best interest in mind? And you're willing to trust him. Amen. And you're willing to trust him and say, I'm willing to wait on the promises of God. Lord, what you said is sure and it will come to pass. Somebody say hallelujah. Psalms 24 verse 14 tells us, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. God will perform it. You may look like there's nothing happening, but I'm telling you, things are happening. Amen? Amen. So we're going to talk about uh, the potter is preparing me for more. The potter is preparing me for more. That's my topic, okay? In Jeremiah chapter 18, if you uh, go there, it's verses one through six. The word of the Lord, which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at a wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel. Also, it seemed good to the potter to make. Verse 5, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as the, this potter, saith the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So we get a picture here of the potter, the potter. There's a scripture um, in Matthew chapter 6 uh, where we all are familiar with and they was asking Jesus how to pray. Okay, remember the scripture? And he says, in this manner, therefore, Matthew 6, 9, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
But verse 10 in there, in that passage says, your kingdom come, right? We said, Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. These are some dangerous words to say if you don't mean them. When you tell God, I want your will to be done, you're saying, God, I'm submitting myself to your authority. God, because you know best for me, and because you know best for me, I'm going to surrender my will. And so when you surrender your will to God, you can't uh, have, uh, if you do, God is able to help you when you got preconceived ideals. This way, you gotta go this way. This, this, this. How many like that? You very orderly, it needs to go this way. And, and, and you gotta understand when you deal with God, amen, it may not go the way you want it to go. How many have been there before? God, you think it's gonna go this way, but it's not processing that way. And things go a different route. And you're like, God, I, this, it means I know God, I think logically. And this is logically, this is logical, right? And it ends up being, God says, no, I want you to do it my way. Somebody say hallelujah. And how many willing to yield to God's will? How many willing to let God work on you? And so when you say, uh, your will be done, we had also, we had prayed prayers like, uh, have you prayed like, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Uh, or Lord, I surrender my will to you. you. And it sounds holy, but what happened when God said, okay, you, you gave me your will, you, you, you're going to let me be who I am? Matter of fact, I'm about to put you on the potter's wheel. And some of you, they may have been, things been spinning around. How many feel like things have been spinning around in your life? It's just going around and around and around. And sometimes it's like you, you ain't going nowhere. But listen, I want to tell you this. Hallelujah! You are on the potter's wheel if you didn't know it. Amen. And he is making a vessel. Uh, he's making a vessel, not of a, 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 a pristine gold or silver, but God is looking for a willing vessel. He's going to make you a willing vessel. Like Pastor Rashad says, she didn't go over there to, to do anything. She went over there to chill out at the pool. But, <laughs> but how many know God can change that? Amen. And she's more refreshed, even though she didn't get to this pool. We go, I'll take you to the water, baby. Come on. Uh, we'll take you. We got a, a wide membership because of Christina. Amen. I just had to say that. And I've been paying 50 some dollars a month. And I got to talk to her. And, and Camille, or Camille, like, uh, your wife, she's an influencer. Anyway, take it out every month. Jesus. <laughs> but we have prayed, Lord, I surrender my will. Do you really know what you're saying? You're, you're saying, God, I give you permission to get the maximum glory out of my life. Even though it may be embarrassing to me, even though it may be frustrating to me, even though it may not make sense to me, but God, I'm willing to give you the, the ultimate authority and the yielding of my life because God, I trust. The dollar used to say, in God we trust. I don't know if this is it anymore. But we need to really trust in God because things, amen, we got to know that God wants uh, order, but sometimes he do things differently than we do. Our ways and his ways are different. How many found that out? <laughs> As, look, he tell you to turn another cheek. I had an issue with that one, amen. Amen, I had an issue turning another cheek because I ain't gonna let nobody push me over. Come on, that's, that's me, come on, that's that flesh, that old J.A. trying to come out. But the dead J.A. surrenders to God's will because he knows what? Best. Okay, so listen. When you say, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, that will you're saying is, the will you're talking is, is W-I-L-L. -L. But what God says, his will is W-H-E-L-L. -L. And he puts you on his will. And that means, I don't know if you've ever seen, anybody ever made a clay pot? Anybody ever did that in school? We had to do it in school. We grew up, I mean, in, in our high school, we had it, we had a school. A, 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 or whatever, if you cook it, you know what I'm talking about? We had all of that, and uh, uh, we had to do it. We made vessels, different vessels. 
we spin it, we make it with the clay. And so I want to tell you that God is making you. Don't you give up, don't you give in, don't you let up, don't you shut up, don't you stop, don't you quit. Because God is making you, even though it seems crazy, you belong to God. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Listen, God is going to lead you. Amen. He will not leave you or forsake you, but he will lead and he will guide you. Because you belong to him. Somebody say amen. One thing I saw in Africa is uh, on, on their main highways, which there, there are um, there are businesses on the side of the highways, and uh, they got speed bumps. So you go so far, you got to slow down. Then you go over a speed bump, boom. And then you speed back up to another speed bump, boom. <laughs> and it's, but they do that to, that nobody gonna run over the people. They slow down, you know, start up. Uh, uh, and, and they got, they had cattle uh, on the side of the road. They had sheep, goats on the side of the road. They had little kids goading them and, 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 and telling them what to do. It was, it was pretty cool. I mean, we watch this. But what happened is we were driving down the road and here comes some sheep just walked out. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I said, those, those sheep are dumb. They have, <laughs> they have no knowledge that they could have just got ran over. Even the little ones just fall on their mom. They walk right on the street. It's not where a speed bump or a crossing. They just decided we're going to walk out the street. Okay. And so <laughs> it's just, it was just amazing to see so many animals on the side of the road. It was just different. Amen. So you are on his wheel. And, and things are spinning, things are moving, but he is there with you. I'm gonna talk about four things uh, about this potter, a potter, what a potter does, what he, how he does. The first thing is that the potter is choosing and selecting the clay. Okay, it's just not any ordinary clay. You just go get some clay. But the potter has to find the clay with the right density. He has to find the clay uh, uh, that he can uh, mold and he can shape. And so when he finds that, amen, he picks you. How many know that you've been chosen? Many are called, the Bible says, but few are what? Chosen. So God chose you before the foundation of the world. He, he, he set you apart. He knew what he placed inside of you. Amen? So, here we are. The potter is choosing or selecting the clay. Again, it's a certain clay. Alright? He doesn't just get any kind of clay. The potter says, this is the kind of clay I'm going to work with. This is number two. The potter has to separate the clay. Okay, and um, as he separates the clay, you ever wonder why, uh, Lord, you're separating me from something, some, some of my friends. How many got some friends and people that you got along with, and then all of a sudden the Lord says, I, I need you to go this way. And you have, you have began the separation, or you have already separated from them. Not that you hate them or despise them, it's just, just your paths are going different. And so God is separating us. He had to, uh, the, the potter has to separate the clay. And, and you can't be like anybody else. You're, you, you are wonderfully and fearfully made. In a book which your members written, you are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar person. How many know you little peculiar? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you think you're normal, normal? If you think you're normal, you're really peculiar. Amen. Because what is normal? Come on. <laughs> Amen. God, God has called you and he says, uh, the potter separates you from everything else. Number three, the potter sanctifies the clay. Uh, the clay needs to, once he gets the clay, he, once he separates the clay, the clay has to be sanctified or be washed. It has to be cleansed. Amen. Uh, how many of the Lord is washing you? How many been, uh, is, you just wasn't washed one time, but how many are being washed all the time? Amen. That's the blood of Jesus. He's washing us. He's cleansing, cleansing us from everything. Amen. You need to be washed and cleansed. Amen. Because the, part, the, the clay that is washed and cleansed is eligible for transformation. 
God wants to transform that clay. And that clay could be a, a beautiful vase, or it could be a, a pitcher, or it could be a flower pot. It could be some kind of vessel that you make out of clay. Somebody say amen. So when God is cleansing you and making you, amen, I want you to know, amen, that he's God. And sometimes when he's making you, he can start all over again. Anybody ever seen the clay? He's like, no, this ain't the right vessel. Boom. He smashes up and beats. And this is what you're going through. Some of y'all going through this. Y'all are going through the making the process, making us as a leader. Some of you, uh, uh, to be a leader, I mean, you're not just, uh, you got the potential born as a leader, but you got to become that leader. There's a making of you. And if you're not made right, the potter will look at that vessel and say, no, I'm starting over and begin to ball that clay back up. And he makes a new vessel out of that clay. Are you with me? And sometimes you don't understand, Lord, why am I being squeezed? Why am I going through this sickness? Why am I going through this pain? Why am I going through this? Uh, uh, my child don't love me like I want them to love me. Whatever you think you're going through, why my marriage is on the rocks? God is making you. His hand is upon you. Amen. Because he wants you to know and he wants you to trust him. He wants you to give you, uh, he wants you to give him your full devotion. You're full. So, Lord, I trust you that you want to make me. I surrender. I'm not thinking myself uh, anything highly than I ought to think. Amen. God, you can make me. I'm willing to go through the process. And I believe when you go through the process as a humble person, you'll get through it quicker. But when you kick, fight, scream, come on. How many know you can't even, get, uh, you can't go have an operation without being uh, sedated? Amen. And they need you to lay down. <laughs> and don't move. Come on. And that they can operate. Sometimes the Lord, if you say, Lord, I don't understand this, but Lord, I trust you. Lord, this is hard. Lord, I'm physically in pain. God, my child is leaving home and my, my son is this and my daughter is this. And Lord, I don't understand why I have to go through this. God is making you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And I'm going to trust him through this process. Somebody say Hallelujah. hallelujah. So the, the clay needs to be eligible for transformation. If it has not been cleaned, if it has not been washed, when you make the vessel, it may reveal cracks in the vessel. So God is cleansing us. He's washing us. Amen. Uh, constantly, we're being washed. Amen. By the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fourth thing is that the potter has to clay on a cycle. Whether he doesn't do it with his feet. Uh, we were in, uh, again, Africa, and they had sewing machines that they was, was powered by their feet. Okay? And so the clay, amen, uh, the, uh, is God is, he got you on a wheel and it's spinning and it's going around and around. See, I tell people in God's school, no one fails. It just takes some of us a little longer than others. Come on, somebody. You understand what I'm saying? And so if you fail that test this time, surely that test is going to come around again. Does that make sense? And the, the potter, amen, is able uh, to put his hands on you and mold you, make you, shape you, and form you in a way that he wants you to be. Somebody say hallelujah. Uh, the clay on the wheel is spinning. And uh, there's been times where this, I had to, for my personal life, I had to uh, thank God for the patience that I have. I didn't ask him for more patience because patience work is tribulation. So I begin to thank God. How many sometimes you want stuff now? Like J.G. Wentworth. 8777 now. Amen. And truly, I want it now, but the Lord is working with me on a process. Amen. To be able to trust Him, to be able to wait. There's so much I want to do. There's so many I, things I want to do, but I, I don't have, I got limitations right now. You just don't know how I want to blossom and flower for the kingdom. And, 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 but I got to wait. There's a point in time that God is going to reveal what He's put in me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. How many believe that? How long, Lord? I don't know how long. 
But guess what? God, just keep me spinning until you say my, 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 my vessel is ready. Somebody say hallelujah. The clay is spinning. You may be spinning, but the potter is working. His hand is working on you. The good hand of the Lord is moving and he's molding you, okay? You know, Lord, I may be going this through this, but if I'm going through this with you, it's okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told them, listen, our, my God is able, if he don't deliver us, that he's able to deliver us. How many feel like that? If I don't ever get what I want to get, God is still God. Amen? So, but as you are spinning, the, the potter is working. Let me look at them and show you three things that the potter is using to work. The first thing the, 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 the potter is using, amen, he has you on the wheel and you're spinning. He uses water. Water. He puts his hand in water and he molds you. He molds the clay. He bends it. He forms it. He puts a, a top in it. He puts a groove in it. He put a smaller area in it and a bigger area in it. He's molding you. Uh, again, with the water. Ephesians 5 26 says that he might sanctify us and cleanse us, cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. The water is making the clay soft. It's making the clay pliable. Listen, you gotta understand that we all have to be pliable. Meaning that uh, we're not stuck in a rug. We're not like semen. Uh, we're, it's not in stone. We're not so rigid. God, what God wants to do, and he'll take his time. God isn't, listen, God is never in a hurry. You're the one who needs to do, listen up and, and, and apply what God says to because he wants us pliable. You know, my, my daughter Lisa, and she still got this spirit on her, God bless her, amen. Uh, when she was little, she's always, we tell her something, she'll say, I know that. He was like, you, did you know that we, did you know that we was going to correct you? I knew that too. Everything that we ask her is what she says, I know that. And, and please, I'm asking you not to be like her. Come on. <laughs> Was David. David had, how many know David was a warrior? Yeah. He fought, he slayed, he conquered, he killed Goliath. Come on, he was, he was a man of war. One of the descriptions in the Bible that he was a man of war. But when they came and took his two wives and took all his the children, all the spoils, David could have said, Come on, man, let's go fight. But David he submitted himself to the God. He says, God, shall I go? and pursue them. You see what I'm saying? Even though he had the might or the knowledge to, to do it, but he says, God, shall I do this? And God says, yes. Go and pursue them and you will recover what? All. Oh. Okay, so I'm telling you, even though you know how to do something, you, we got to be pliable and submissive unto the Lord's will to say, God, if you can teach me another way. I know how to pray, but God, you can teach me another way to pray. How many are like that? Or how many here think you know it all? Okay, I'm about to, I was about to call the Lord on you, right? Amen. Amen. Don't, don't be like my daughter, Lisa, and, and, and learn and listen. Somebody say amen. I'm almost done. So the first thing that the potter uses is water. And as we stay in the word of God, we are going to be cleansed and washed. Listen, we, there's a thing called sozo. Sozo is saying, I am saved. But I am being saved. So so is saying, I was delivered and I'm still being delivered. How many still in that process? And so so. Amen. So God is working on me. And so I'm willing to say, God, I'm not rigid. Lord, I'm flexible. Lord, you put your water on me. Cleanse me from my attitudes. Cleanse me from my, my ways. And I think, God, I want to know your ways. Not my will, but your will be done. So the second thing the, the, I want you to notice that the potter is, uh, is doing is that the, the, his hands, the potter's hands, again, the potter's touch, 
The unique thing about the potter, he knows how much pressure to apply to make the vessel that you need to be made to become. He put, okay, we know the scripture says that he wouldn't put, put more, um, he wouldn't put more upon you than you can bear, right? Because his hands is there, amen, and he has the right pressure not only on the outside of your vessel, but also on the inside. He's making it, he's curving it, he's, he's performing you, he, he, he's, he's uh, producing something out of you for his kingdom, amen? So his hand is up on you. Oh, again, uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, it says, We, uh, yeah, okay, it says, We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Why? why? Why are we going through all these emotions and feelings? Because God is working on us. It may be difficult, uh, and, 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 and to surrender your will and let God work on you is an amazing thing. Yes. Amen? The third thing, and I'm getting closer to the end, the third thing is, not only the water, his hands, but the potter's mind. The potter's mind. Uh, the potter uh, doesn't have a blueprint. Okay? The potter uh, doesn't have a road map. The potter uh, doesn't have an architectural drawing. But when he's making you, his mind is upon you. And what kind of vessel that you're going to be for him. Does that make sense? That he's making you. Uh, it's, it's not like, okay, make these little uh, flower pots. No, when he's making you, he's making you into whatever he wants right then. And, and how many know that we're becoming in the image and the likeness of God? We're becoming more and more like him. To the glory of God. Amen? No. No blueprints, no roadmaps, no architect. The design of the clay is in the potter's mind. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and hope. So God's thoughts towards you. He's thinking of you as he molds you on his potter's wheel. Amen? God knows what he's doing. Somebody say, God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. He he always knew what he was doing. He knew. Amen. And he still knows what he's doing. Yeah. I want to look at verse, uh, Jeremiah 18, verse 4. It says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it into a vessel and another vessel as it seems good to the potter to make. The beam, the clay, our clay is marred because of sin. Yeah. Because of what Adam and Eve did, amen. A sin has entered into the world. Our clay is mar marred, amen, uh, with sin and that, that we want to sin uh, disfigures us. It, it, it disfigures the clay. Sin causes us to cheat and steal. It causes us to fornicate. It causes us to, to curse people out. It causes us to do evil things. It's marred, but it takes, I mean, the, the, the blood of Jesus to transform us. Amen. Into a new creature in Christ Jesus, a new vessel. And we're no longer that vessel that is marred, but we are a vessel, amen, that's been washed, that's been cleaned. Amen. He, he works on us continually. Somebody say hallelujah. See, what happens is the issue with the clay is that the clay can't fix itself. How many ever try to fix ourselves? I'm going to be good. I'm going to stop smoking. 
I'm going to stop this. How many, and some people do some of those achievements, amen? But it's, how many know it's still by the grace of God? But you can't change yourself. It takes God and his word to change you. Somebody say hallelujah. Thank you, God. So, again, the potter, at any time, he can take that clay and destroy the clay. But that's not his will, to destroy it. His will is not that, that people will perish, but all shall come to repentance. Amen? Amen? Everything the clay is, is because of the pot. The clay is not, uh, is, the clay is at the mercy of the pot. Okay? So what, what Jeremiah is basically saying about the, the potter and the, and, the, uh, and the potter's house and the clay He's, Jeremiah is basically saying in chapter 18 that it's all about God's grace. That he makes us. That he's working on us. Okay? Uh, it's his grace when we lie. I was talking in Bible study, uh, Kingdom Studies, I was, uh, Thursday night, I talked about lying. Just, just and, and, and I asked, uh, how many dealing with lying? And, and, and all the hands went up. They were, they were telling the truth in. I'm just talking. Linda didn't put her hand up. I told her, put your hand up, Linda. Come on. Because you're lying right now. <laughs> I'm joking. Come on. But what, what, amen. Sometimes the enemy will try to cause us to lie. How many have dealt with that? There's a whole bunch of people in our kingdom study saying, uh, is, I don't know why they want to come off my mouth and lie. But a, a lie, amen, is, is Satan's language. The Bible says he's the father of lies, okay? And so when you lie, you're speaking his language. Come on. And we don't want to do that, right? And so uh, when we lie, uh, we need to be able to give all our issues to the potter and let him cleanse us, let him, let him mold us, let him shape us, let him form us, let him uh, prepare us. And, and so that's what we're going to do. Psalms 27, I'm almost done. It says this, um, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen? Psalm 62, 5 says, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is of, is of him. See, God loves you too much to leave you like you are. He's going to continue to work those kinks. He's going to continue to work that stuff out of you. And I want you to understand that you're on, you're on a potter's wheel. Even when we mess up, when we fail, God is still working. He'll pick up that clay that failed. Amen. He'll take it and he can reuse it. And he can reshape it and he can remold it. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, saints of God, all I want you to know is that God wants us to trust him. And I want you to know that we're on a potter's wheel. And he's making us. Even though we don't understand it, we've got to surrender to his will. Somebody get God a hand clap praise today. Amen. Come on, give him a shout. Is there anybody in here today that don't know the Lord Jesus? I would like to introduce you to him. Amen. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's the king of the universe. And he loves you dearly, desperately. Amen. He wants to make you into the vessel of honor. He wants to make you, amen, into a vessel that he can use. Again, a vessel is not your education. It's not your much money you got. The vessel that God is looking for is a yielding and a willing vessel. God, make me. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to ShilohHub.com. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.